and good morning to you. It's Saturday the 9th of May 2015. A warm welcome along to you. This is uh, Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom talk. There go the bells. Oh, oh you can't see my clock today. Do you like the flowers? We've got flowers there today as well. Oh, you can't see them, can you? Look, it? Flowers. But they're kind of covering the clock a little bit. Does that matter? Do you want me to move the flowers so you can see the clock? That's the question. We're also going out today uh, live on Periscope, that fantastic new app which you need. You do need Periscope, boys and girls, okay? Now, I've got a, a little bit of a throat. Again, this is left over from uh, last, last week's cold, which was at its worst on Tuesday. Morning, Mike. Uh, the cold was at its work, worst on Tuesday. Um, it was still dodgy on Wednesday, but it's left me with this difficult to talk throat. So we, we might not even make an hour today. We might not make an hour, boys and girls. How awful is that? Yes. And I've got a couple of things on my lips. I think they're called cold sores. There's one at the, I think there's two at the top, actually. One minute. You can see them in there. One minute. So no one's going to kiss me, are they? <laughs> what, this year hasn't happened? No one kisses anymore. I want to, uh, no one does it. Why is that? Have you been kissed recently? That's the question. Yes. If you're with us on Periscope, feel free to send messages at any time, boys and girls. I'll try and look up and not miss them because they only stay on there for a few seconds, don't they? Uh, Wendy. Morning, Wendy, who's uh, always with us, either live or recorded. I'm not sure if she's there today. Uh, she might be or she might not. Wendy um, says she, she thinks I am run down, boys and girls. I am run down. I'm doing too much. Now, I'm a person who likes to be doing stuff most of the time. Whether it's gardening, little videos, going down the shop. Um, even you know, I'm quite happy to go down, to, down Waitrose. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like a day out to me, going to Waitrose. I love it. Pushing that little truck. And and the thing is with Waitrose, nothing is rushed. Okay, you go in with your little scanner, you put your card through, beep, 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 and then you start going to do your shopping. And each time you scan, and you get a lovely little bleep each time you scan something. Bleep, bleep. Put it in the basket. Bleep, bleep. Put it in the basket. Sometimes you get a bleep, bleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means... It's a special offer. Yes. There is a different sound for special offers, boys and girls. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. That's how it goes. Honest. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. And then you look at your scanner and it tells you two for one offer on dairy free milk or whatever. I love that sound. And you carry on you at your leisure. You can be in there two or three hours. There's no one rushing you. No annoying people rushing from A to B. You know, pushing their blooming prams and things past you. That's another thing now. Have you noticed that? When people... Good morning, Terry. Morning, Terry. Have you noticed how people keep pushing past you in the supermarket or wherever without saying hello? Or excuse me. Rude. Rude, dear. I hope you're not one of those people. I've got to the point now where if I see someone, I've just had nearly lost it. Oh, what's happened, Terry? What's happened, Terry? Tell me. Tell me what's happened. Poor Terry. He's he's not happy about something. Anyway, he'll, t- he'll tell us in a minute. Tesco on a Saturday. Oh, don't even go. Tesco? Sorry, Terry. Am I reading that right? You are a... Tesco shopper. Well, I don't know what to say. I'm disappointed, Tesco. I'm I'm disappointed. I always put you down as a waitrose lad. Is it? Is it? (laughs) Where do you do your shopping, Mike? Do let us know. Someone has a shop there. <laughs> club coin, cl- club card points accepted. What the, that little card has enticed you into Tesco's? God's sake, man! 
God's sake, what's wrong with you? You'll be telling us in a minute you voted Liberal Democrat. <laughs> poor Nick. Poor, poor Nick. <laughs> now, come on, we don't do politics on here, only as jokes. Only as jokes. But well done, Terry. Um, yes. Where was I now? Oh, yes. Yeah. People don't say, excuse me. They push past. I've got to the point now that if I see someone coming towards me, right, I will move back a little bit further so it's more difficult for them to push past. But they still do it. They still do it. They, they push past you. Rude. Scum. That's what I call them, boys and girls. Scum. Absolute scum. And it doesn't happen in rape shows. You know, someone comes towards you, you instinctively just move out of the way. Or, if you don't see them, excuse me please, and it's usually a little old lady, people are absolutely falling full of self-importance, Terry, that's right. I move out of the way for them. But you see them in Sainsbury's, right, coming towards you with that trolley, or even worse, a buggy, a go-anywhere buggy, complete with or without child, you know, thinking that they can push this thing anywhere at any speed towards anything at will. And they do. Rude. The pl this scum. Pe people are scum. They really are. Why haven't they got any respect for anyone else at all? Anyway, I don't know how you got onto that subject here. How did we get on to talk about weight throws? And so, oh, I, I, so I can't remember now, dear. Um, so, that's it. I was talking to... By the way, do you like the jacket? I've got a black jacket today, which I've just dragged out of the, um, of the cupboard, right? I actually... <laughs> I think this is possibly the jacket I wear to funerals. Does it look like a funeral jacket, or is it quite acceptable, boys and girls? Do let me know. <laughs> and I went into the pocket... And I pulled out one of my, my asthma things, you know. <sniffs> wait 10 seconds and let the air out. I pulled that out of my pocket and um, I thought, oh, I'll put, that, I'll put that back in the shelf. And then I looked at it, it ran out in 2010. <laughs> Is, does that stuff actually go out of date, asthma stuff? How? How does that go out of date? It's not like it goes off, is it? Why does it go out of date? So I did chuck it away just in case, you know. You're never quite sure, are you? Should you be using that or shouldn't you? Yes. If you want to join us on Periscope as well, I do lots of little videos on Periscope now. Periscope username is Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Terry H loves it. He says, no thanks to you. <laughs> well, well, well. <clears throat> anyway, Wendy reckons I should be taking vitamins. Now, she sent me a little message yesterday. Let me have a look. She did send a, a, a suggestion yesterday. I'll, I'll just bring that up in my in my message section. Are you one of those people that saves all your messages? I must admit, I don't save all my messages. Um, there's one bloke all right, who will remain nameless. If you are watching this show, I wonder, or listening to this show, I wonder if you realise it's you, OK? There's one bloke that saves everything. Right. So if you've ever sent him a message in the past or an email, this saddo will say, oh, but you said this in May 2007. Photocopies that, uh, you know, what's it called? A screen, screen save, screenshot. He will photocopy the screenshot and send it back to you. What sort of annoying, sad old character does things like that? Well, there's one that watches this show. I'm serious. He saves all his emails, all his messages, everything. Sad. Sad, sad person. Anyway, um, Wendy said to me yesterday... One moment, please. I'm a bit worried. Do you feel like you are overdoing things a bit? Uh, she says, yeah. Do I? <sighs> yeah, probably. But I've always been like that, Wendy, to be honest. I'm someone who, uh, I can't sit still. You know, if I'm not doing this, I'll be in the garden pulling up a couple of weeds. Um, oh, 
what have I done? Oh, I've done. I've cut the hedge this week. Done a bit of hedge cutting. But one of my hedge things. What are they called? Trees? Hedge trees? One of my hedge trees seems to have died. So, I mean, that's a bit of digging out. That is. But I, I, I think you can now get like a, a saw from B and Q. Which is like a chainsaw, but it's electric. You know, so gone. None of this. It's bloody hard work, and it's sawing down a tree. It really is. Not that I've ever sawn down a tree, but I get one of those electric things. You know, done. Ten seconds gone. And then cut it up in pieces and put it in the um, green recycling garden cuttings bin. So I, I like to do stuff all the time. Wendy says, maybe you could do with a tonic. Seven Seas is a good one. Taste good. Orange flavour. Now, you see, I don't go along with all these vitamin tablets. I did see an article in here. Um, in um, Oh, good morning, Mark. Mark. Mark's joined us on the Skype as well now. Morning, Mark. Um, I did see a article in a newspaper a couple of years ago, actually, it was. And they were saying that people that eat or take vitamins, live no longer than people that do take vitamins. So what's the point? Also, I tend to think that if, you know, for vitamins and all that sort of thing, you need to be eating a wide variety of foods. I mean, if you're one of those people who lives on Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza and McDonald's, you ain't doing yourself any favours. I mean, you're really not. You've got to eat vegetables. Vegetables. I probably actually don't eat a wide range of things, I must admit. I'm vegetarian. Um, but, I, you know, they say you get iron and that from meat and that sort of thing. I think I'm probably lacking on that, on that sort of thing. But that's where I think you should get your vitamins from, not from pills. I'm not too keen on all this, you know, take a pill, vitamin pill here, vitamin pill here. I don't think it does anything, to be honest. I really don't. You can join in at any time, boys and girls, if you want to. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, I've got a Skype. My Skype username, if you want to call in via Skype, you can do so. Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. United Kingdom Talk is the Skype name. And I also have a local London number. If you want to call in local London number, 020 8144 okay? 020 8144 Terry H wants to know, do I miss meat at all? No, not in the slightest. All you've got to do is sit yourself down, down there, Terry, with a nice big steak, okay? Or a piece of chicken, and then go onto YouTube and type in animal cruelty cows or chickens or pigs or lambs or type in, you know, slaughter lambs, cows, chicken, whatever. Sit there and watch that and try and eat your dinner. You won't be able to see. I checked out all these things and I thought, no, nah, I'm not having anything to do with this anymore. And that was that's over three years ago now. Terry says we had uproar at work this week as they've decided to serve halal. Well, halal seems to be, to me, a particularly brutal way to kill something, to eat it. It's when they do it in a certain way, isn't it? However, you're still killing it. Is there a humane way of killing something? You know, I, I don't know. So, in in my mind, it's all the same, really. I did kind of separate it in my mind. Well, that's okay to kill it like that. Oh, no, 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 that's not that's not right to kill it like No, no, you're still killing something, you see, I reckon. So, um, halal is, is, is just another method. I would have been very pleased, Terry, if you'd have just said then that we've decided to serve um, just vegetarian food at work. <laughs> I think I'm being taken out for a little for a little something on Wednesday. I'm very, very excited. My best mate, Ron, knows I've got Wednesday off this week. So I shall also be doing a late night chat show this coming Wednesday at 11 p.m. UK time. OK, late night chat with Chris Reardon. 
on United Kingdom Talk Wednesday night at 11 o'clock UK time. That'll probably be a two-hour show. So I'm looking forward to that. Anything that you want, might want me to talk about that night might be quite good. OK, so Wednesday night, 11 p.m. UK time, a late night chat show returns as I have a night off. But during the daytime, my best friend Ron has said to keep it free because he's taking me out somewhere in the afternoon. How exciting is this? And I've been trying to guess. I thought he might be taking me out for a meal. But then he said, have a light lunch. So, I don't know. So if I had a late, a light lunch, then surely it wouldn't be a meal. Um, and then I thought it might be taking me to the cinema. But then he says, wear nice clothes. Um, if you see me at home, I do, I am a bit of a tramp at home. Tracksuit bottoms, an old T-shirt that might have been worn for three days. I can't lie to you, you know. Don't be fooled by the smart image portrayed before you on this beautiful sun Saturday afternoon. So I can't work it out. And then I wondered if he might be taking me somewhere for afternoon tea. Um... Because afternoon tea isn't masses and masses to eat. You get little sandwiches and cakes and things like that. So it might be that. He also said it involves a river. So I'm thinking, I've got, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what's going on there. I'm wondering if he's going to take me on a boat down the river. With afternoon tea. What do you reckon? So I'm quite excited about that Wednesday because I've no idea what's going on. All he said to me is it involves the river. Maybe he's going to take me there and push me in and end my sad, lonely, pathetic life. Terry reckons it's afternoon tea on the Thames. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I have no idea what it is because we actually do live near the Thames here. Not the London part of the Thames, but up this end, Windsor and all that, where it's, it's nowhere near as big as it is once it starts going through London. Is it? So I'm looking forward to that. And also, I've got another trip in a couple of weeks in June. We are going to see an opera. Yes. Now, what is it called? One moment, please. Let me just refer to my notes. Uh, a Tchaikovsky opera. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Did you see how I moved into Russian then? So I can speak all the languages. Here's Russian. Tchaikovsky. See? In and out of fluently. I'm fluent in most languages in the world. Did you know that? Uh, it's called... The Queen of Spades. And it's a Tchaikovsky opera. I can't remember where it is now. Anyway, we're going to see it. So I'm looking forward to that. So I said to him... OK, well, I've seen this. Do you want to go and see it? And he said, yes. I said, OK, can you book it and I'll give you the money? Right. Because Ron is disabled. He's got problems with his back. So often we can get in two for one because he gets special concessions. At the moment, he's now wearing a back brace, which he actually looks like a security or policeman as he walks around with us. And people give him funny looks as he walks around, which he loves because he loves the attention, to be honest. You know, he loves people looking at him. He really does. So he wears this thing. He's got this, this back brace, which keeps his back upright like that. And I think it helps. And he's also on loads of painkillers right, and all that business. So we get two for one tickets. Anyway, so I left it to him. And then that was Thursday. Thursday night, I told him. And yesterday afternoon, he rings up. He said, oh, I've booked the tickets. He said, I'm very pleased to tell you I've got two for one. And guess what? I said, oh, don't say the front row seats were gone. Because always try and get near the front. I can't see from behind. You know, it's just, you, you just don't see. You know, if you want to go to something, save up the money and sit at the front. Absolutely. Right? He said, I've got a box. I said, what do you mean a box? He said, we're sitting in a box. I said, what, one of those boxes round the side? He said, yes. I said, well, how much does that cost then? He said, 
we were lucky. Because not many of them have been booked, the price has gone down, and I've managed to get two for one. I said, in a box? He said, yeah. I said, well, how many in a box? He said, well, it's supposed to be four people in a box, right? Two at the front and two at the back. And we've got the two seats at the front. But the lady told me on the phone, what tends to happen is that if two people book a box, no one else will go in that box because they're looking for privacy. He said, so we're probably, it's very likely, we will be in the box on our own. I've never, ever, that's really posh, isn't it? And that is really posh. In a box. I think it's the London Coliseum. I can't remember now. But, I've, you know, I never, ever thought in my wildest dreams I've been sitting in a box to see a show, dear. How wonderful is that? I wonder if Mark's still with us. Do they have boxes in, uh, in football places? Mark's a big, big Arsenal football fan. I won't tell my nephew because he's a Chelsea fan, Mark, and he might come round and beat you up. OK, I must warn you that. He might come round and beat you up. Do they have boxes in football grounds? I suppose they do. Do they somewhere? Oh, they do have boxes, do they? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And are they very expensive? I mean, this this was this was a little bit more expensive than a front row seat. Front row seat. But of course, there's two for one, so it's really, really, you know, not that expensive. So I cannot believe we're sitting in a box. So I suppose, can you take things in a box like flasks of tea? You know, little cakes and sandwiches. That'd be quite nice. I do, I do like, um, I do like the, the idea of that. I think Mark might be about to ring us and talk about, talk about boxes, actually. Boxes in, um, in, um, oh, what's it called? Boxes in football grounds. But that's really, really posh. They could take in tea, sandwiches, cakes, all sorts. That would just be fantastic. And I know, I'm just waiting for someone to say now, yeah, but you're on a diet. Bye-bye, Terry. Terry's off now. Thank you, Terry. See you soon. I just like the sound of that. I really like the sound of that. Good morning, Mark. Morning, Mark. Uh, morning. All right? You all right? Yeah, very well indeed. So tell us about these boxes in football grounds. Who, who tends to sit in those then? W would I be someone that might be interested in that? Um, you could actually, yeah. It's uh, very posh in there. It's very, um, they serve you food and oh. and stuff like that and drinks at your seat. Yeah, but yeah. Is, it, is it like food you and I might like, like pizzas and burgers, or is it that posh crap that we don't like? Um, no, it's it's... Food like pizza and burgers, and they have a lovely little meal. Oh, and um, I'm... it's quite amazing actually. How much uh, is that then, Mark? Oh, a lot of money. You have to win the lottery to get a box there. Do you <laughs> really? And do, yeah. do, would would they book that for like one event or the whole? Uh, what's that called? Uh, season. Um, it's for the whole season, and right. um, yeah, you just um, like you can have people in your box. So right. if it's your box, oh, right. you, so, uh, you, you bring like your nephew or your niece or whatever in into the box. OK. I think my nephew might like that. If I ring up Chelsea, you know, and say, oh, I'd like to buy my um my nephew a box. for what, Did you say one event or the season? It's for the whole season, Chris. Oh, so perhaps I could get f for his birthday Christmas present uh, a box at Chelsea. How much would that cost, please? Um, a lot. <laughs> are we are we talking a few hundred quid? Uh, no, a few thousand. Probably. Oh, really? So yeah. that's not going to happen, then, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever sat in one, Mark? Um, I haven't sat in one. I've uh, obviously I've worked in one before. Yes. At Arsenal, and it's like really nice. Really. Really, yeah. Really, really nice. Is um, it? Comfortable and obviously, I suppose you can see the entire pitch from there. But aren't you a bit far away from all the action? Um, yeah, you are, but it's a brilliant view. Right. I mean, it's like right high up, so you know, it's quite nice. See, a friend of mine went to um, went to the O2 when I went to see um, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Um, 
one of my visits to the O2 when I went to see Barry Manilow. And um, I got this text and say, where are you? I said, well, I'm at the, I'm at the Manilow concert. He said, where are you sitting? And I think I said, third row back at the front. And um, he said, well, I, where, I'm here as well. I said, where are you? We're in a box. <laughs> and I'm like, well, wh where's the box? He said, if you have a look up to your right. And I looked up. Right. And it's not yeah. like a balcony in a theatre. OK. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you do, have you been in the theatre much? You ever? Uh, you know? I have. Yeah. Right. So you see those boxes around the side. Yeah. But they are boxes. They're like little balconies, aren't they? Little yeah. balconies. Right. Well, this wasn't like a balcony. It was like just a, a glass front. Yeah. And I thought you're just completely and utterly detached in there. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm glad I'm not up there. Yeah. You know, I'm really pleased I'm not up there because you you just yeah. nowhere near the action. And yeah. did you not feel like that when you was working in the box that you you weren't part of it? Um, not really. No. Um, you know, um, it's sort of like it's lovely working in there, but yes. being they're a bit ignorant in there you know and they're really rude uh, yeah yeah a lot of posh people are like that mate yeah they're so rude it's unbelievable see that that's the difference it? Now, in a theater in a box it's open yeah. you know there's no glass in front of you so you would still feel part of it i think that's yeah. you know it's, it's just a little bit more private i suppose but i think when you're in one of those blocks boxes and you're separated by a piece of glass yeah then then you've you've kind of come away from all the action yeah, it's a bit like that. It's yeah. you know, okay. It's, it's it's lovely up there. I wish I could afford up there. Oh, you would like so you would actually be quite happy to have a season in a box. I would do. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and then is that your box? So no one else can go in there for the whole season. Um, or can you rent it out? Well, you like, as I said, you can invite people into your box. I mean, you're not meant to sell your box, but. Right. You can say, here's a ticket, you know, you can have it, you know. Right, I see. You can, you can give it to people. Yeah. And, so, you, and you work at the Arsenal, don't you? What, what do you do there, Mark? Yeah, I'm a steward. So what does that involve doing? It's just crowd safety, really, and making sure that they're all right, really. Right. Do, do you get any abuse from people sometimes? Um, A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just waft it off, do you? Go away, little boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see you've got a new job coming up Monday, have you? I have, yeah. The, is, that, um, is that starting or just an interview? It's uh, I've got a, it's starting. I've got a training day on Monday, right? So is that the uh, Ota Arena. Oh, doing what? Is that stewarding? Uh, yeah, well, security front of stage. Wow! So You're... you might see me at the Nick Barry Manilow concert. Well, we don't know if he's coming again. We're hoping. Oh. Well, I hope he's coming again because he's on his last tour now. Because he's oh, like, really? I think he's 71 now, or he's 71 this year, which right. actually is on the same day that we're going to see that um, that opera. I've never seen an opera before. Oh, I'm wow. You'll enjoy it. It's quite nice. Have you been to one before? Um, I haven't been to one. I've seen it on the, on the telly and stuff. I've never so. watched one on the telly or anything. This will be the first time I've ever seen an opera. So I'm yeah. quite excited by that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, now I've got a busy day coming up today. Right. And you probably don't know. I'll just tell your viewers if uh, if they want to know. Because um, it's VE Day weekend. Yes. Uh, tonight on BBC One, they've got the Victoria and Europe um, concert. I saw that. Is that the Royal Abbott or the O2? No, it's on Horse Guard Parade. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, so you've got status quo a headline in tonight. Yeah. Um, and you've got, like, uh, the Blue, the band Blue, uh, Jane Horrocks, Yes. You've got re readings as well. It's going to be really emotional, I think, because yeah. a lot of the veterans are going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sitting at the front of the stage. And um, I think Dame Vera Lynn's going to be there, but she's oh. not singing. She's She must be... How old is she now? I think she's 89, I think, the other week. I maybe, think. maybe she can't do it now. I, I, I haven't seen her on the telly. For, I heard her a little while ago. Do you know what? It was a great shame. This whole VE thing has been... Yeah overshadowed really by the elections isn't it good morning ben ben's just joined us now you know ben parker don't you yeah yeah this is mark uh singing at the uh, chatting at the moment ben 
He's, uh, you know, Mark, who comes around to sing at the karaoke, Mark C. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, no, it's, it's going to be quite, like, emotional. It, the election was, like, horrible to overshadow. The, yes, it was. Yeah. You know, the, they, they were filming the politicians. Because they retired or they resigned that day, mm. they basically overshadowed it a bit. And I think that was a bit wrong of the, the veterans and... A bit disrespectful, in in my view. Um, that was surreal. That was yeah. absolutely surreal to see to see the um, election happen like that. Yeah, right. And the polls getting yeah. it completely and utter for weeks and weeks and weeks. We were told that it was a fifty-fifty split. Yeah, for weeks. And then yeah. to get it so wrong like that, I yeah. mean, I just couldn't believe it. When the poll came out on uh, the the exit poll, that's that's I think that's a BBC thing, isn't it? The exit poll. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a YouGov type. Yeah. BBC type. So is it thing. is it run by the BBC? The exit poll. Um, I think so. Yeah. Right. When that came out, and I I was at work. I just started work, so I fired up my computer and I'm, I'm playing my music. Um, I was DJing that night, so I had the BBC thing, uh, the uh, website on, you know, watching what was going on. Yeah. And this thing flashed up, Conservatives yeah. to have a majority. And I thought, well, that can't be right. Yeah. That must be wrong. I said, they're going to be embarrassed by that one. How can that be right? After yeah. after being told for months yeah. that it was going to be a 50-50. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And it wasn't even, they said it, they're going to have a very tiny majority of two. Well, as it turned out, I think it was, was it 13? I think so, yeah. I think it's about 12, 13, something like that. Yeah. So it was even more than the exit poll. Yeah. And do you know, I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. um, how the poll could have been so wrong. Yeah. And what I reckon, now, you've probably seen on Facebook yeah. when people admit to voting for a party, whichever one that one is. It doesn't matter what one it is. Right. Yeah. And within a short space of time, someone yeah. else will go on there and not only have a difference of opinion, yeah. but be quite nasty about it. Yeah. OK. Now, I don't mind anyone having a difference of opinion. Yeah. But there's been some really nasty, nasty comments. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw from, that, Chris. I mean... From horrible... I'm sorry. From horrible people. How dare you go yeah. on someone else's wall and yeah. vent your anger on there? OK, yeah. have a discussion, yeah. But not that. And do you know what I think has happened? Yeah. A lot of the people that voted, in yeah. this case... Uh, probably the Conservative voters, but some yeah. of the others as well, OK? Some of the others as well, mm -hmm. have become secret voters. Yeah. Right? Because they don't want... They don't want almost violent people knowing who they're voting for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what's happened. There is an awful lot of people that just don't speak up. They don't want hassle. Yeah. They don't want nastiness in their lives. Mm -hmm. So they keep quiet and votes are all secret. And I've often, right up to this election, right? Yeah. I've always thought, you know, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, tell people who you vote for and all that. But something's happened this time. Now, it didn't happen last time mm. where... People have been just downright nasty with their comments. Yeah. Really, really nasty. Now, I've never seen that before. Yeah. And these same people presumably um, want uh, diversity. Yeah. Okay? Oh, you know, we shouldn't all think... But they haven't got their own... Some of them that haven't got what they wanted are now just being horrible. Yeah. If there was a government in 
perhaps this government is in who I didn't want to be in. Maybe this yeah. one or another one. I'm not pinning my colours up because I don't want nastiness either. You know, I could have voted Labour. I could have voted Conservative, Liberal. Um, uh, who else? Uh, any other Greens? You, you could, I could have voted for any of them. But I'm not going to yeah. tell anyone that. Right? Because I don't want nastiness coming down my blooming Facebook yeah. or Twitter. I don't want it. Yeah, right? that's exactly what I did. I, I didn't put on Facebook who I voted for. You don't have to tell anyone. Why should you tell because, anyone? Yeah, it's going to be and a of political course, debate. And of course, you know what will happen next. Those, they, they start attacking the people that didn't tell you because yeah. uh, they will say, oh, well, in that case, you must have voted for so-and-so. Yeah. Right? trying mm. to get it out of you. But don't be pushed. Don't be pushed yeah. into that. It's your business and no yeah. one else's. Yeah. Uh, ben says, this year was a hate campaign based on fear. Luckily, most of the electorate saw through it. Yeah. But that's why we now... That's why we have secret voting, I suppose, because of this. As I say, it's never bothered me before. I've never seen anything like this before. People being just horrible... Really horrible to each other. Yeah. You know, friends of years and years and years attacking each other publicly yeah. on social media websites. And we don't yeah. need that. I certainly don't I, need anything like that. I don't that, know if, you, if um, you agree with this one, Chris, but yeah. um, a friend of mine said on Facebook, um, why don't they use pens when we vote? Because anyone can just rub that cross out. In the you know in the ballot box. Yeah, fair point. Any, anyone could easily just when they're counting it up, like rub it out and count it as another vote. That's a fair point. So that's what somebody said to me. They should use pens. I suppose you could do that. I mean, and I don't understand why they don't have curtains anymore across the you know the. Uh, when yeah, they going, used to have a little curtain as well, didn't they? It's probably a yeah. cost cutting exercise or something. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, Mark. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but I, you know, I've never seen anything like this before. With, with, with the nastiness going backwards and forwards, yeah. and um, I don't want anything like that. And I think that's where that's where the Conservatives won actually, um, yeah. because there were a lot of secret voters yeah. all over the place. Not in mm. London, interestingly, um, but certainly down south, all the way up into the Midlands, there was an awful lot of uh, uh, blue blue things on that thing, and I think they quietly as they're quite right to do, quite quite right, in their own right to do, quietly went into that little box, put a ticks on the blue one, uh, put a cross on the blue one, and left and said nothing. That's how they've won. I think. Yeah, I well, think. it's a shame, really, you know. I mean, we just got to put up with it for the next five years, I suppose. Oh, well, yeah, uh, I won't get into who should have won, who shouldn't have won, or anything yeah. like that. I'm saying just the general way that people have been about this before, during, and now after, even carrying on now. Yeah. Even carrying on now, Mark. So there we are. Yeah. Um, what else have I... We're going to talk about something else today. We want to get another couple, because it's only 20 minutes left here. God, it's <laughs> gone so quickly. Mark, do you go on holiday much, or have you been on holiday much in the past? Um, no, I haven't yet. I'm going... Sort of like on holiday in the start of June. I'm going up to, well, it's not really a holiday, it's um, to near Brighton. Oh, right, yeah. And I'm going up for a friend's wedding in Littlehampton. So. Littlehampton, yeah, I had a, a, an elderly, a dear, dear old elderly lady friend of mine. Uh, uh, I used to work with her at British Telecom years ago. Yeah. And uh, she moved to Littlehampton for a while. She had a little house down there and she she loved it down there. Yeah. Is it more of an old older people's place? I mean... Would I be happy there, for example? I think. <laughs> See, I, I can't. It... I wouldn't move anywhere unless I could have my 152 meg Virgin broadband. You know, yeah. it'd be no good to me. Well, I know somebody that moved down there. You, you probably remember him from karaoke yonks ago. Um, um, George. 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 Geordie no, George. We call George him. isn't there now. He moved to Spain. Did he? Yeah, oh, he moved okay. to Spain eventually. Um, you're quite right. He was down there for a while. Um, yeah. I think about six months with his lady. Yeah. Um, and then I think he came back and then moved to Spain. Yeah. Hello from Ireland. We've got someone with us from Ireland. Hello, hey. Ireland. 
We're just in the middle of a little chat show. Hello, the Irish there. We love the Irish. Just to let you know, my nan was from near Tipperary. Thank you. Oh, Tipperary. My nan was from Tipperary. I've never been and there that, yet. And that on live on Periscope from Ireland. Yeah, yeah, on Periscope. Yeah. And we got, uh, they're from Dublin. Hello, Dublin. Hey, Hello, Dublin. The Dublin. May we have your votes, please? Dublin, <laughs> du zapois. Oh, Chris, I've got to say one thing. Yes. Um, I'm going to a Eurovision party this year. Oh, really? Where's that? Um, it's. Am I allowed to say it? Yeah, of course. It's at the Walkabout Temple. Right. In, um, it's by Temple Station. Uh, what they're doing is yeah. they're going to do. They're going to screen the whole night. Yeah. Um, and they're going to do face painting. Um, so, and they're going to do karaoke as well. Oh, fantastic! So you can sing songs from Eurovision, and also uh, if you come dressed in your favourite country, yeah. You might win a, I think it's a 50 quid bar tab or 60 quid bar tab. Oh, that's fair enough, isn't it? And then you get second place, gets a bottle of champagne. Yeah. So that's on, on Eurovision night. I think they kick off at eight o'clock. But if, if anybody listening wants to go, um, just go to the Walkabout Bar uh, Temple website and it's all on there. Oh, that's on the night. That's unusual for a pub to be doing that. A lot of the gay pubs do that. Um, yeah. You probably don't know. But um, the straight ones tend not to do it. So that's they, good. They're so doing it because um, Australia are, uh, for the first time in it. That's right, yeah. Australia. So yeah. that's why they've agreed to do it this year. And I think it can be pretty good. I think, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy. I've got a table book, so so I'm quite happy what, about what that. What date is that, Mark? Let me have a look. Uh, I think that's on the 23rd, Chris, of this month. Oh, I'm, yeah. up, in Co I'm up in Coventry that day. Otherwise, I would have come oh, to oh. that with you. Someone's sending me love hearts. Love hearts to you as well. <laughs> I've got loads of love hearts. Have morning. you? Yeah, <laughs> I must say I haven't heard any of the songs yet, Mark. Um, yeah. Uh, well, but... the, um, our British entry was on Graham Norton last night. Was it? Right. Yeah. They, I've, they I've seen that one, but that's yeah. the only one I've seen so far. Yeah. But I'm not lo Stop liking love uh, Graham, Graham Norton's new beard. Yeah. It's, it's getting longer. Oh, it's awful! It just yeah. makes him look filthy, dirty. Yeah, I don't know why he's done the that. Worst. But... It just looks dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I think Jack's with us today as well. You know. Oh, is he? I get a feeling Jack's there. I'm not quite sure if Jack's there. Yeah, I was meant to go down last night, but I weren't feeling too well. Where so to? Down at Central Station. I was meant to go down for karaoke, but... All oh, right, Ian was doing it last night. Yeah, I weren't feeling too well, so... All oh, right, OK. And I needed my uh, my rest for tonight because I'm going to be doing a lot of dancing and singing. At You're the dancing concert. tonight? Yeah. At a V concert, that is. All right. So... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Get your dancing shoes on. Yeah, I, was, I mean I was, it's live on BBC, so yeah, yeah, fantastic. We, we can all uh, experience it and have fun. Good. What time's that on then? Uh, I think it's on. It goes on air at half past eight on BBC One. But the show actually starts what yeah. we're watching at seven o'clock. Okay, yeah. So my guessing is they're <clears> pre-recorded an hour. Yes. Before they go out live, that's what they usually do in right. case there's any mistake anything goes wrong yeah yeah i see what you, know. you mean but um it should be pretty good and like i said tomorrow there's a fly pass happening tomorrow right what time's that uh that's at one o'clock over where oh well it's over st paul cathedral and westminster and all that um and it's going to be the red arrows are flying over and then you've got um the battle Britain memorial flight but right. unfortunately the i was reading in the news um the Lancaster bomber yes. had a bit of a fire yesterday. Oh, that was at, um, is that Tattershall? Uh, it's <clears throat> somewhere near Lincolnshire. There, yeah, there. I've got I've got a place up there, actually, Tattershall. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> my, um, my, my niece's husband works at that RAF base. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, he does, um, he's, he's RAF, but he, he fixes the planes, you know, or maintains yeah. them. That's what he does. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Unfortunately, they had a bit of a fire, so they said uh, they can't uh, afford to get it up in the air, right? Um, because it could take a, look, a little while to look at the engine, see what's happened to it. Yeah, pull it apart and see what's going on. But they've added a couple more uh, hurricanes to it, so there's okay. going to be a lot more in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over London. Lovely. So. I'm just going to look at my calendar and see if I can. One second now. Friday. Oh, I've still got that one in there. 
Okay, no, I'm just checking something now. All right, Mark, nice to talk to you today, okay, sir. I'll let you, let, me, let you get on with your show. I thought I'd ring in because your voice is obviously... Yeah, it's, uh, and, it's, so it's a I bit difficult. I thought I'd do most of the talking. It's a bit difficult yeah. getting the sound out today. The old voice is going. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm going to do my little Periscope later from the Horse Guard Parade, so hopefully you can join in. Lovely. Tell us your username on Periscope. Uh, it's Sparkloaf26. Sparkloaf26 oh, on Sparkloaf. Periscope. Lovely. S S P A R K. Oh, Sparkloaf, sorry. Sparkloaf26. 26. Oh, you're so old. And, well, yeah, I know. Do you know I'm you're not... half my age? That... Half my age. Do you know where I got that name from? Where? When I first started Twitter. Yeah. I'm not actually 26, Chris. All right. Oh, right. Okay. But it was when I, I, that was about four years ago, so. But yeah, no, if anybody wants to join in, I know I've got um, a few people like, um, I think Anna from Lucian going to join in and stuff like that. Great. So I think I'm going to get a couple of followers and I'll, I'll do a little periscope and then stop because I you, don't want to wind down the battery. You've got to do a periscope every day. You need to do oh, one every day. That's I've what done they say. three today. Good lad. Good lad. See yeah. you later then, Mark. You have a guys. Good day. And great yeah, time I'll tonight. Yeah, listen to the rest of your show. All right, mate. Bye-bye now. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. There we are, Mark calling in from London there. You can call in if you want to, boys and girls. Um, holidays. Holidays. Your favourite holidays I wanted to talk about as well on the show today. Have you got one? Perhaps it was one in the past when you was a child. Was it? Or somewhere that you keep going to or used to keep going to. Or maybe it was just one holiday that you went to in the past that you have never, ever forgotten. What was your favourite holiday? Now, we might carry this over on to Wednesday's show. Mark's back on the periscope now. We might carry this over onto the Wednesday show because we're going to do a, a late night Wednesday show this week uh, between 11pm and 1am. Hopefully the voice will be sorted then. That's this Wednesday. And you can find that by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and clicking the union flag right at the top. Or you will also be able to watch it and join in via Periscope as well, OK? Uh, Joey says hello to Mark uh, this morning as well. Good morning, Joey. Nice of you to join us. A bit late. Better late than never, my friend, OK? So what was your favourite holiday? I'd like to know about it. Either by email, send your email in, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or you can Skype in. Skype in and tell me about your favourite holiday. Or your favourite destination? What was it and why? Skype in United Kingdom Talk. That's the Skype number. United Kingdom Talk. Or you can phone in on the telephone. Local London number. 020 8144 3477. 020 8144 3477. If we don't get anyone doing this one today, I'll do it. I'll bring it up again on Wednesday night. I've got a lot of wonderful places really that I've been to over the years very very lucky to have to have been to so many places but I do indeed have favorites although I think um there isn't there, there is actually a particular favorite holiday which was two holidays ago when I took my nephew to Florida now I've been to Florida a few times, and I often mention this, I often mention this, and I've had a good time, I had a good time. But my favourite ever holiday was taking my nephew to Florida the January before last, and we just had such a wonderful time. And the reason was, I had someone young with us, and yeah, I, he was 17, and you know, he's the big man, I don't need to be looked after, but if you're an adult, you'll know exactly what I mean. I had someone to keep an eye, okay, to keep an eye on, right? Not to look after, because he would say to you, oh, I don't need looking after, no, he's 18 now, I don't need looking after, you know what I mean, to keep an eye on. It was just nice, and all that was in my head all the time was not, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do, that. that was not in my mind, it was completely different, because in my mind, right, what would he like to do, oh, we need to do something now in case he gets bored. Oh, what will he want for dinner? Oh, we, will he like it there? Will he like? It's completely different. It is completely different to going on holiday on your own or indeed with a friend. I found 
over the years, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I go on holiday with friends, doesn't work. Doesn't work for me. You end up having rows about sometimes the most ridiculous things. It doesn't work. <clears throat> I don't know why. It's almost sad, really, that that doesn't work, isn't it? But I, I, I just, awful, awful. And I, I really don't, don't want to go on a holiday with friends anymore. It just doesn't work for me. I've never really gone on a holiday with big groups of people. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I have, really. Have I? No, I haven't, no. I was going to say I have, but then I was working, so that's a different thing altogether. Um, but when I was smaller, we used to go to Pontins. Pontins holiday camps, that would be in the 70s. And we had wonderful times there. We used to set up, uh, set off on a Saturday morning, early, you know, 6, 7 a.m. And we would get there by about 10, 10, 11. There'd be the car, um, an Austin, an Austin car, I think Austin, Austin, I can't remember what they're called now, Austin something or other. What's the name of those Austin cars? Ben and I know. The Austin cars. We had the roof rack on the top, all the suitcases and everything. There'd be me and my sister in the back fighting. <laughs> it was always her fault, honestly. Always, always her fault. <laughs> and there'd be mum in the front and dad driving and we'd have a... Mum would have a cassette thing in the front, you know, tapes, cassettes. I've got a cassette here somewhere, isn't it? Young people would be looking at this, wondering what the hell it is. This is a cassette tape. OK, got one here. I don't... What's on this one? Oh, this, this is one of my old uh, Liberty Radio shows on there. You know, I didn't put the, the Skype number on there. That's better. I've got it on there now. Um, we get there about 10 o'clock and we check in and then we get our cases and take them take them to a chalet, which are like little little flats all on one, rows and rows of chalets. And it would be wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And you'd have activities to do during the day. Um... There'd be a swimming pool usually, outdoor, cold. And we'd go on the beach. Yeah, you would have to leave the holiday camp usually and go on to the beach. And the food was all-inclusive. And I don't know what it's like there now, but Pontin's food was just amazing. Breakfast, lunch and dinner at a set time. It was, I suppose, in today's terms quite regimented, the way it was all run. You went and had your breakfast, I think, between 8 and 10. And there would be loudspeakers all round the resort, the holiday camp. And at breakfast, lunch or dinner time, music would be played. A, a, a specific tune would be played, indicating that it was now... Breakfast time. <laughs> Wait, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Or at least I do now, you know. I mean, we loved it then, but I was always... As I became a teenager, I didn't really want to go on holiday with my mum and dad. And I remember one particular year, I think I was 16, and I insisted on having my own chalet. Otherwise, I wasn't going to come. And they got me my own chalet. And, you know, all I did was moan. And I just hate myself so much for that now. I suppose that's a teenager. I've, said, I've talked to people about this before. And they said, Chris, don't hate yourself. This is the same for all teenagers. They all moan. And all I did was find fault with everything. All I did was moan. Much to the point that mum actually said to me, I'm sorry you didn't have the holiday you wanted. And then I think that brought me down to earth and I thought to myself, how bloody ungrateful are you? I was 16 at the time. I don't think I went on holiday with them again after that. Which, in hindsight now, I think to myself, why, why, why didn't you go on holiday with them again? You know, how selfish was I? It's just horrible. But I do remember some wonderful times at these holiday camps when I was younger. 
and there'd be all we'd we'd all be in one room, mum and dad in a uh, big bed, and there'd be um, my sister usually at the bottom bunk and me in the top bunk because there would be bunk beds in there as well because we're only little at the time. Um, and at night you'd have entertainment. There was no, I don't think there was a DJ at all. There was no one playing records. It was all bands. You would have a band playing covers all night long. Generally, the night would start off, you'd have dinner, and then you'd move into the ballroom and then would be bingo. There would always be bingo. Five and one, 51. Seven and nine, 79. Hey, else? I don't think we ever won. <laughs> and then after the bingo, there'd be a little break. And then the band would come on, and it was the same band every night except one. They seemed to have one night a week off when you'd have another band, which was never really as good as the one that was there all week, because you got used to them, I suppose. That's all it was. And they would generally play covers of things, you know, whatever. Um, you to me are everything. There'd be um, ballroom dancing, waltzes, quick steps and all that would be going on. There would be competitions on the stage. The blue coats would come in and do, like... Um, Best baby competition, knobbly knees competition, fancy dress competition, hat competition. All these things would, would happen on the stage. And then you'd add some sort of variety cabaret. Um, could be someone juggling, someone doing magic, a singer, a comedian. Every night there would be something different. Then the band would come on again. At nine o'clock, they do this little thing to say goodnight to children. And then the children would be taken to the chalets and left to sleep. And the parents would come back. Now, in those days, I suppose it was it was it felt safer in some ways. I don't know why. And people were quite happy to leave their children in a chalet. And Pontins would have people walking round past the chalets, right, listening for children crying. And if they heard a child crying... They would come back to the ballroom and there'd be a big board and it would say baby crying in chalet and they put the number up. So you would know. And that was quite acceptable then. Quite acceptable. And then after nine o'clock, the band would continue. There'd be more dancing. Um, actually, I think the cabaret was up, would be on after nine o'clock. And then at twelve o'clock, it was all finished. And we'd all go to bed. And halfway through the night, Mum always bought me a strawberry milkshake. Yum, yum, yum. Only ever one. And that was quite nice. And Dad would have his pint of shandy. Dad always drank shandy. I can't remember what Mum used to drink now. Did she have a little drink? Maybe a port and lemon or something like that. And they were just wonderful, wonderful holidays, Pontins. And I wonder what they are like now. Butlins, Pontins and all that sort of thing. Have you ever been to a holiday camp? I mean, it was great in the 70s. Um, looking at TV programmes like Watchdog and things like that, they often have had pontins on there and they don't get a very good write-up. But are they as good now? I, I don't know. I think we're going to carry this on on Wednesday. And the reason I bring up that is because my nephew at the moment, uh, sorry, my niece at the moment has just gone on holiday yesterday to Haven Holidays, somewhere in Norfolk, I think. And uh, I've got a little picture here of my great-nephew, George. Sorry, you can't see that on Periscope. I do, uh, I'm do. i sorry about that. But that's a picture of George, and he's just got to... They're, they're in a caravan, large caravan, you see, on this Haven Holiday site, and there is a picture of him there. They just got there, looking totally and utterly excited. Aren't you, George? <laughs> That's a fantastic picture. It really is. <laughs> and I do miss that. I, I, I miss I miss um, going on holidays like that. We'll continue this, actually, on the, on Wednesday's late night show, OK? So don't forget, we've got a late night show on Wednesday between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. Wednesday. Find that by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Click the Union flag at the top there and that'll take you to it. Or, of course, uh, on Periscope as well. And the same as like this, you'll be able to call in. That's it for the show today. Sorry, we didn't get quite around to the um, how to sell a house story, did we? 
maybe we'll do that on Wednesday as well because we've we got two hours to play with on Wednesday. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, Saturday, have a wonderful time, whatever you're doing tonight. I shall be DJing tonight at a place called Central Station in King's Cross, okay? That's between 10.30pm um, and 3am tonight. And we've also got Cabaret on stage at 11 o'clock. See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.